Welcome to the second in this series of videos on how to improve your educational videos. In this one, I'm going to talk to you about how to feel comfortable on camera and how to kind of discover yourself so that you feel natural talking to a camera. Because for everyone, it's a bit weird at first. Still is a bit weird, to be fair. All of these tips in this series of videos can be found in my book, Teach on YouTube, How to Start and Grow Education YouTube Channels. And make sure you watch to the end because I'm going to give you my surefire tip for how you can stay calm and comfortable on camera and make sure you talk really naturally. And at any point in this video, if you've got any questions about how to improve your educational videos, leave them in the comments section below. So I love making videos with just my phone or just really simple kind of, you know, chuck out a PowerPoint type video or just using a simple visualizer and talking over it. Production value isn't everything, but pretty soon if you keep making educational videos, you're gonna want to improve that. And you're gonna start to see the things that you can improve and the ways that other people's production values are maybe a bit better than yours. My most popular video actually took 10 minutes to probably shoot and edit. It was about spinners and I did it all on my phone. And, and then some videos that I've taken hours or even days over the production editing of have just died and hardly anyone's ever watched them. <laughs> what I've really noticed this year though is that as I put more time into editing the videos and making them more polished, actually people are staying around for longer in them. YouTube Analytics has a audience retention graph and that tells you how long people actually stay within each video. One of my latest videos had an average watch time of around 15 minutes. It's a 20 minute long video. If you outgrow what you're doing and you want to improve what you're doing, then this is the video for you. First of all, about talking to a camera. It is really different to talking in the classroom. And you're probably used to being this quite dynamic person and a really engaging speaker in the classroom. But you find it quite difficult when suddenly you press that record button and all of a sudden you get a bit nervous. And well, I literally have a, a bit of paper in front of me that says, calm down and be yourself. <laughs> and I could really use taking my own advice sometimes. But my best tip to you is to sort of imagine talking to just one person. Talk to one person who is attentively listening, who really cares about what you've got to say, who's just kind of nodding along. Use your kind of classroom voice, yes, but you don't need to keep the attention of the whole class of people. You just need to be engaging for one person because very likely there's just one person watching your video on a small screen and they've decided to watch the video and they're gonna follow along with you. But at the same time, because it's the internet, there is a high likelihood that they could just click away or find something else, distract them on the side of their browser or pick up their phone if you aren't an engaging speaker. So it's important to get that right. If you muddle your words, then just stop and start again. You don't have to start again from the beginning because you can edit out those little bits that you didn't get. Practice, 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 and practice. It's gonna take a while before you really calm down and find yourself and feel comfortable on video. And that's okay, it's actually totally normal. I have something like 700 videos on my channel and I still don't feel comfortable in front of the camera and I still muck up my words and I still sometimes make a video and then look back and think, what have I really said in this video? It takes time and it takes practice but eventually you're going to get to a point where you can talk to the camera and you can be engaging and you can hold people's attention. And that's what you need to do to be a success and making educational videos. I mean, I literally have a note there that says calm down and be yourself. My best tip for saying calm and not being self-conscious on video is just to talk as if you're talking to one person. Imagine that one kid in your class who sits near the front and who nods along. Just imagine talking to them. So there's a bit of a discussion whether you should script videos first or whether you should not. And Mr. Botu who makes geography videos suggests you should definitely script and you should definitely edit. Mr. Bruff, who is one of the most popular English teachers on YouTube, he strictly scripts what he does now. And one reason he does that is because then you can provide accurate closed captions of what you're saying. And captions actually tell software like YouTube accurately the content of your video. So it'll actually show up much better in search if you do that. I kind of favor going for a bit of an outline and then just trying to riff on this. And I'll, I'll talk to the camera for maybe 20 minutes to make a five minute video. But that requires quite a bit of editing afterwards. So I wouldn't necessarily suggest that's the way to go for everybody. Thanks for watching Gorilla Physics. We focus on GCC and A-level physics, but also I'm starting to make more and more videos for teachers and educators trying to improve their educational videos. And I really want to make more content to help out people in this period of time we have right now where we're doing more and more distance learning than we ever have before. Check out the playlist for more videos aimed at educators trying to improve their educational resources. And also find the links for my book, Teach on YouTube, in the pinned comment and the descriptions below for all this detail and much, much more.